So last week I made a video about the Kissing Booth 3, and one comment I saw a lot was like, How has this series gone on for so long? Well, hey, get on my level, buddy. So Riverdale took a long hiatus for like five months, I think, and now it's finally back for the second half of season five. So hey, for old time's sake, let's see what impossibly superhuman feats Archie and Pals are getting up to this time. But before that, really quick, this video is brought to you by Honey. I'm sure you all know what Honey is by now, but just in case this is like your first day on YouTube, Honey is an online shopping tool that searches and scours the internet for promo codes to help you save money on things you're already gonna buy anyway. I mean, seriously, Honey works with tons of websites, more than I could ever possibly count with my shoes still on, and they help you save money on anything you could want, really. Shoes, bags, video games, makeup, clothes, you name it. To get Honey, it's extremely simple, okay? You just go to joinhoney.com slash alexmyers, you click on the little button right here, and that's basically it, you're ready to go. They even aggregate all the biggest deals from tons of other stores as well, so you know what's on sale and when it's on sale. And just in case Honey can't find any promo codes for the thing you're buying, they give you free Honey Gold whenever you purchase stuff while using Honey. That's it, it's that simple. So either you're saving money via promo codes or you're getting Honey Gold you can redeem for money later on anyway. So either way, you win. Again, just go to joinhoney.com slash Alex Myers, click the button to get Honey today, and start saving some money. Okay, back to the show. So starting right off with the most boring character of the show, we see Archie getting ready for a parent-teacher conference at school so he can put all the parents' minds at ease about the fact that Riverdale's just kind of turned into, like, Mad Max. And, uh, so over here we have the Grizzly Bear Boxing Drills every Thursday, and every second Monday we send the kids to a seminar called How to Get Glistening Sweaty Abs, even though all you do is just play guitar all day. And here is where I lead your shining stars in song. Kevin is an amazing Glee Club director. As a matter of fact... Not to worry, folks, it's probably just a circuit breaker. Why don't you guys wait here and I'll be right back. He was in the army. He's got it. Now, what we come to find out here is that Hiram staged a breakout from his own prison, and he's paying them to turn Riverdale into an even more, like, lawless wasteland. Anyone in here? Uncle Frank! Archie, open up! Oh, God. It's a good thing you told me about Paris tonight. Uncle Frank, Kev's dad said there was a prison break. Maybe not. I overheard some of my fellow inmates saying they were getting paid to trash the town, especially this school. So a bunch of the escaped prisoners all just decide to head over to Riverdale High School for some reason and try to beat the crap out of Archie. But like, yeah, okay, come on. I mean, Archie fought like 10 trained assassins back when he was a junior in high school. What, you think Johnny Five Nipples over here is gonna make him break a sweat? Anyway, so after he shakes off like five concussions, Archie gets all the parents out of the school and everything just kind of works itself out. But of course, after this is all over, Archie has to help rebuild the school that the criminals just like totally trashed. And golly gee, where are they gonna get the money? Local philanthropy. Hiram Lodge and I are offering a reward for any information that may lead to a safe capture of any and all prisoners. Wait, so Hiram sets free a bunch of cons and now he's offering a reward for bringing them back? It's a PR stunt paint themselves as heroes. Now a little after this, we find out that a few of the criminals have banded together and took Hiram, Kevin's dad, and the governor hostage because they want this precious metal thing Hiram's been mining called perineum. What do you want? Palladium. Palladium, palladium, yeah, that's, that's what I meant. We dug it out of the ground for your father and now we want our share. <laughs> but he won't tell us where it is. So, I thought maybe you could get through to him. And so Veronica ends up bringing her dad's safe thing to wherever these people are, and Archie and friends just kind of grapple hook their way in like they're on the September issue of Sexy Firefighters Monthly. What the heck is happening here? And of course they save the day. Anyway, moving on. Now remember how I said all the criminals broke out of Hiram's prison? Well, you know who's also included in that bunch? Expecting anyone? No, I may have forgotten to invite the Blossoms. <laughs> Charles. Hey, Mom. Little sister. Hi, Betty. <laughs> oh, 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 chick. <laughs> what happened? I mean, this dude looks like one of those guys who dates 15-year-olds when they're like 27. Anyway, so turns out Chick and Charles showed up because they want Betty's mom to be the minister for their wedding. <laughs> And so then here they are, just having like a wedding seance or whatever this is supposed to be. And then that one FBI guy that's been trying to get with Betty for a while, like he also just kind of walks right in and uh, there's a bit of a kerfuffle. Betty decides to hit Chick with a throwing knife and then her mom shoots Charles, so... Problem solved. Anyway, moving on. Jughead is, of course, still trying to write that book about Mothman and other Riverdale mysteries, you know, like, how is this show still on TV? But as always, he's having a bit of writer's block. The heck was that? 
Like Jughead's whole story arc is that he's having money problems, and this is how he treats his laptop? Now, over the course of this season so far, Jughead and Pop Tate's granddaughter, Tabitha, have been hitting it off pretty well, you know, and they might even be doing a little, uh, little necking, little smooching, you know what I'm saying? And so they sit down and have a little heart-to-heart -heart talk. I'm sorry that I tried to kiss you. That was totally inappropriate of me. Well, I leaned in, too. I'm sorry, I... Things are just kind of complicated for me right now. I know you've met Betty. She and I had a terrible breakup back when I was in high school, and I never really recovered from it. Oh, okay, so Jughead gets to brood about an emotional breakup for seven years, and that's all cool and artsy, but I didn't go to prom 15 years ago and make sure to mention it in, like, almost every video I make, and I'm the one who's pathetic? Pfft, yeah, okay, sure, I see how it is. But anyway, so, because he's having such a hard time writing anything, he gets a little help from some funky fun guy to, like, free his mind or whatever. But then after this, you'll never guess what happens. Oh my god. Yeah, so Jughead is now missing as per his little vacation, if you will, and no one knows where he is. Now, despite how awkward this is all gonna be, Betty decides to help Tabitha find Jughead, because hey, you might be his ex-girlfriend, but you'll always be his babysitter, you know what I mean? Where did Jughead get the phone guy? <laughs> his ex, Jessica, came up from New York to deliver them. Maybe he's reached out to her. Hey Jones, how was your trip? Is this Jessica? Yeah. This is Betty Cooper. I'm... Wait, the Betty? Oh my god, I have so many questions for you. I'm calling because he's missing. Has he reached out to you? No. I'll come up to help you look for him. So just to summarize a little bit here, we have the high school ex-girlfriend, the recent ex-girlfriend, and the soon-to-be next girl in line teaming up to help this one dude. Yeah, okay, I've seen enough anime to know where this is going. But then after a little bit, Tabitha gets a voicemail from Jughead, and we find out what's been going on. Oh god, where to start? I'm sorry. I'm sorry I, I haven't called. I'm just sorry for everything. If you're blaming yourself about me wandering off, I'm fine. I'm heading to New York. There's something I need to confront. Now, as if Charles and Chick coming back wasn't bad enough, there's also another annoying character that escaped from prison, Cheryl's mom. Give yourselves over to the holy sweetness. Drink of his sweet water and be saved. Who exactly is he, Mumsy? This water comes from a son who died for the sins and the darkness of this world. I speak of my son, Jason. So like, she made a religion about her own dead son? <laughs> but like, I mean, come on, how much more bizarre could the show get at this point? Episode 12 of season 5 is all about Hiram Lodge and how he came to be like the way he is. Why he's so obsessed with taking over Riverdale and all that kind of stuff. All done. Don't believe it, I must have left my wallet in my other jacket. Tell you what, I got something better than cash. That, my friend, is palladium. Yeah, so just to summarize here, everything Hiram's done over the last, like, four seasons or whatever has just been to dig up Riverdale to find this Palladium stuff. You know, the new MacGuffin the writers just kind of threw out there. Because sure, why not? We also find out that Reggie joined up with Hiram years ago to pay off the debt his dad owed. And once he pays it off, Hiram does actually let Reggie go because he doesn't want him to mess up his relationship with his father any more than he already has. You're done, Reggie. I no longer require your services. Mr. Large, hold on. I want this. If I could go back... Just spent a few more years shining shoes with my dad. Man, I'd do that in a heartbeat. I left so I could prove to my father what I can do. Just give him one more chance. And you know, to be fair, okay, I actually think this episode was pretty alright. Like, it focused on only a few characters, it was filmed in like a sorta kinda different way. Dare I say, I actually enjoyed this episode. But you know, I gotta ask, like, at this point, what exactly is Riverdale anymore? I mean, with the whole 70 year jump and all that, like, it's not a teen drama, and it's not even a romantic drama at all, hardly. Riverdale's just kinda become a gangster show, I guess? Like, who is it even for at this point?
But you know, all jokes aside, I mean, Riverdale is definitely coming into one of those, uh, one of those like eras that a lot of TV shows kind of get into eventually if they go on like for too long. Uh, Once Upon a Time, I believe like the last season of it was like a basically a totally different show with completely different like characters and everything like that. I mean, you've seen this with lots of shows that with Pretty Little Liars where it's like they clearly ran out of ideas and then just like threw everything at the wall. Uh, Teen Wolf was the same thing. And, and like a lot of teen shows do this where it's like the whole story is like our kids are teenagers in high school and so they're falling in love and doing teenager stuff but also they got superpowers or whatever. But then it's like, you know, if you're going to have them in high school and the show goes on for more than like a few years, it's like they can't, you know, they can't just like stay in high school for 10 seasons, right? Now, I mean, to be fair, you know, Supernatural did the same thing and that show went on for about 27 trillion years. So I guess it's possible that Riverdale could just keep on going. Like it could just keep being popular, I guess, which, you know, which it's certainly possible. But like I just said in the video, I mean, I'm just really confused as to like what the show even is and like who it's for. Cause I mean, like now everyone's 20, and there's nothing there's like hardly any romance at all the teen stuff is all gone the the high school is barely even like in the show anymore because of the storyline all that. so it's kind of like i'm just confused as to like what what the show is and what they're trying to do with it all the tweens that were in it for the teenage high school stuff it's like i don't know if they're gonna watch a bunch of 25 year olds talk about how much money they owe loan sharks you know what I mean? like i don't know i don't know who it's for it feels it feels like it's on its last legs where like the writers don't really know where they want to take it and they're just gonna kind of throw random stuff at the wall and see what works and then it's gonna kind of like with we saw it with like dexter and stuff you know like game of thrones even where it's like the last couple seasons you're just like really are we really doing this okay anyway i hope you enjoyed the video everybody if you did don't forget to subscribe don't forget to ring that bell so you don't miss any videos from me send me an email at alexmyerscontact at gmail.com let me know what tv shows or movies you want me to do next podcast out you can check the link down below for that there's a game i have on the app store it's like a match three type game check that out i have a spanish channel like i mentioned whole bunch of stuff going on over here but anyway above all else everybody have a great day and i'll see you all next time